We're good. Um, we started out yesterday with uh, just sort of an overview of why it's important to understand three major things in your business. What's your business model? Many of you all told me that you are want to be or you are currently high ticket, low volume. But that was decision number one I wanted you to make at the conclusion of our session yesterday. Decision number two was who is your client? Who are you going to help get out of town consistently and regularly? And three, are you going to charge a fee? And many of you all told me you are going to charge a fee. So I want to start with what were some of y'all's biggest aha moments from yesterday? What did you guys take away from yesterday? Who would like to share? You can share in the Facebook comments or you can come off. I'm, a, I'm not that kind of presenter that's like, don't talk to me. I like you guys talking to me. So uh, what did you guys, what were some of your big aha moments from yesterday? So if you joined us yesterday, what, what did, was some of the biggest things that you took away from yesterday's session? I think I, for me, oh, okay, I'm go sorry. ahead. Sorry, Lori, go no, ahead. It's, it's okay. I was going to say, um, I think for me was really um, showing me that I was not organized in my business, although I've been doing this business for a minute. And the aha moment for me was thank God for you because it's time to really get it right. You know what I mean? Instead of flying off the seat of my pants and then charging a fee because I realized that a lot of people do charge a fee. Um, I think I was scared for a long time to charge a fee, um, but I hear so many professionals in the business talk about it now. So I think it's just something that I'm going to um, not dance around but really incorporated in what I'm doing. Good, good. I love to hear I that. second that. Yeah. Who else? I, like I, I third that. Um, I think my one of my major things was charging the fee. Um, I was easy to charge the fee if I was just booking flights. No problem. They send it. But when I did packages... It was like I wasn't charging. And then it was like, well, how do I put it in here? And it was like I either found a way to just add it into the commission. But then I was like, you know what? It it makes sense. I'm wasting my time because, like you said, you go do all the work and then they'd be like, uh, never mind. Or they just ghost you. And the next you know, you see them on vacation and be like, yeah. This is exactly why I need to charge a fee. And I just got to figure out how to do it in advance to just be like, this is my fee and it has to be done prior to. And that's where, that's what I need to get out of all of this. Well, good. Did you decide on what your number is? Uh, yeah, no. Because I was charging 60 when I did flights per person. Um, but I, I haven't. Hear, I, I'm, excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm going to interrupt you. And I want to hear what doesn't make you smile. Give me a number that makes you smile. See, that's the part I got I to gotta get to. <laughs> oh, I just think you're afraid to say it. Everybody has a number that makes them smile. No, <laughs> like, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't that know. Um, and I do feel like the work that I put in is worthy of anything more than that. I, I just, I don't know. Like, I was seeing all the numbers yesterday, 150, 200, 250, 300. Someone said 500. I was like, gee. But I was like, wait. But, you know, but when you look at all the stuff you actually do, I mean, yeah, it could it could come up to that. Okay. So you still have some homework to do, which is get comfortable with the number that puts a big, giant smile on your face like that. Like, if anything, you guys walk away from yesterday. That's the thing I want you to walk away from. I'm be like, yeah, at least I got your money up front. You didn't want to book this trip? That's fine with me. I'm two, three hundred dollars uh, richer. I, I'll happily design a trip for you, right? I don't have any animosity towards it because you've already paid for said service. I didn't feel like it was slave labor. You got it for free. You janked me. It was an even exchange. Um, so, and that's what it should be. You are performing a service. You get paid for that service. So, um, and position it accordingly. So. Anybody else want to share before we jump in? Yeah, mine was what made me, what would make me smile, right? The number that would make me smile. And I charged, I did a group, uh, mystery group, and they, I just did their flights, right? 
six months in advance, but you know how the airlines are. Their air changed six times between <laughs> the last two months. And I'm scrambling trying to get them on right flights. They're going to, you know, all over the country, even Canada to Tbilisi, Georgia, right? It's not like that. It's that many flights, right? But Turkish, Qatar, Emirates, all of them just were changing all over the place and moving people all over. And I said, you know what? A hundred for international is not enough. If I can, it's just, it's just not enough. It's not yeah. enough the way the airlines are going. So yeah. it's going to be more. Good. Do you feel, are you smiling? The number uh, you yes. I'm getting ready to smile because I'm getting ready to update my, um, my, my um, service charge page. Lovely. That is what, because listen, ladies and gents, I don't think there's any gents, ladies and ladies. Um, uh, I think maybe there's a gents, but anyway, the point is, is that you guys are performing amazing services. You're bending over backwards to deliver a service and there is no one in the planet that says that that service has to be done for free. So the reason you aren't charging is because of you. There's no law that says that we can't charge. There's nothing in the books that says that we don't charge. Now, historically, travel advisors didn't charge, but a lot has happened since historically occurred. <laughs> you know, enter in COVID, um, enter in airline hell, enter in so many other things. Um, so the, the point of yesterday was really develop a process, stick to the process and by golly charge for what you're worth. Okay. And make you and make it, make it, make you smile, make it do what it do. Okay. Which is to make you smile so that you can do these services and be happy about it when you do them. All right. So today, I think, I think it was Natasha who said she didn't know how to, she didn't know how to say it. She didn't know how to say the number, right? So today is all about conversations, right? Conversations that convert. So mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and I'm going to mute you all if you are not talking. Um, and then I'm going to make sure you can see said screen. So let's see. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Yes. Awesome. There is a guy. That was a guy's voice. Hello, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Jen. Alex, nice to have you on. And also, uh, <clears throat> Comment on the last thing I just joined and caught the last half of that uh, conversation about charging fees and that kind of thing. Um, it also makes people think twice before they either make changes, cancel altogether, and that kind of thing. Because once you charge, like say a planning fee, a change fee, and whatever else, uh, people aren't going to pull the uh, nonsense basically and uh, cancel stuff just because they didn't want to go or something, some dumb response that might not warrant cancellation. That is correct, right? I don't, I don't, I am a really bad booker, right? So <laughs> this is just a quick little story, right? I don't normally cancel on my doctor's appointments because they charge $75 for canceling. <laughs> I don't want to pay $75 because I didn't want to get out of my house and stop working to go to the doctor, right? So you're no different, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so put the fees in place and they do, like Alex said, they do help deter unnecessary cancellation just because there's no penalty for it. So um, that impacts you know, same reason why the doctor charges a cancellation, right? They've already hemmed up their books, hoping that you would show up and then perform the service. Same thing. You've already hemmed up your time. You've already put that time in. You should get uh, paid accordingly. Now, I will tell you, cancellation fee is still separate than your planning fee. Somebody cancels, that's another 250 per person for canceling, right? Like, so let's not get it twisted. I'm not saying you just give them one price and that's it. Okay. All right. Great recap. Great aha moments. Keep them coming. Um, put in the chat. If you're not on Facebook, I think, I don't know if you guys can put, are, are, you, are you guys able to chat? I wanted you guys to really be chatting in Facebook. So, um, so we can keep all the chats together. Um, just go in to Facebook and do that. That's right. Charge a fee. All right. So today we're going to talk about conversations and who needs them. Yesterday I shared with you that when I first started in 
pretty much any of my businesses, I did not want to talk. How many of you guys feel like that? Like, I didn't want to talk to clients. I just wanted clients to show up, you know, particularly when I had a, a brick and mortar store, like I didn't want to, I, I love, I like, I like talking to people, but I didn't want to be like in the forefront of sales. Like I didn't want to be, I was always thought the word sales, conversation, sales calls, all of the words sales was not a cool word that I liked, nor did I like the whole idea of the process. It just reminded me of sales carmen, car salesmen. I just didn't want him to do anything. So when I got in the online space, I was even further away from talking. I was on somebody, I think it was Ryan Dice way back in the day, 20 early uh, 2000s. And he introduced me to the whole concept of like marketing and lead, you know, lead uh, opt-in funnels and all that. And I was like, yeah, that's what I want. I want to have a product where I don't have to talk to anybody. I just want them to buy it. And that's it. I don't want to have a conversation. And so what I quickly learned is that doesn't get you paid. It <laughs> doesn't get you paid. Doesn't get you, doesn't get you clients. You do have to talk. And the higher the ticket, the more you should be leaning to having a physical conversation with a person. Um, most of you all don't have brick and mortars. Most of you are online. So who needs them? If you're high ticket, low volume, you need them. If you're low ticket, high volume, you may not need a direct sale to close the sale, but you still need to have conversations. So we're going to talk about all the different types of conversations you should be having in your business that you may be avoiding. How many of you guys are avoiding conversations? Like you just did how many of you guys can relate to just not like wanting to talk to your clients and just like want to be like heads down. Like I just like being behind the computer, playing around on my computer, you know, thinking around with my website, like doing all the tech stuff, like having conversations, messenger, com like I didn't want to any of it. I, I You could have missed me with all that. Like how many of you guys felt like that? You guys, everybody is cool with sales conversations. Everybody was like, yeah, no, I'm good. I'm in. I'm like the more the merrier. I didn't want to do any of it. And like, um, yes. Like you said, it depends on the, the value of the conversation. I mean, if I'm didn't say a small carnival cruise or something like that, I kind of expect the minimal amount of conversation to be required for that uh, versus a higher ticket item, which uh, might take many hours and uh, many days of pr uh, preparation, I guess, for the, the sale. That is correct. So I got a lot of me's in the um, Facebook group, which is great because that's the reality is, is that if you're not natural at sales and it's not your thing, you may not be so excited to go ahead and just start talking to people or maybe you're talking to people and you're not like asking for the sale. I don't know who's not on mute, but can I, cause I'm getting some background noises. Um, I'm gonna mute you all again, um, just so I can not close this meeting chat down. Um, just because there's a static. Okay, all right. So who needs sales conversations? Literally, all of you do really doesn't matter what your business model. I'm going to talk to you about what that really looks like in terms of the kinds of conversations you could, you need to have with clients or pre clients. Remember yesterday, we talked about what our goal is. Our goal is to have more meaningful conversations with qualified travel prospects. I don't have a lot of time. And I suspect many of you all don't have a lot of time to be having meaningless conversations. I don't want to talk to people who, don't get me wrong, I love talking, but I don't have the time, nor do I want to continue to carve out the time for people who aren't serious about the thing that I'm serious about, which is helping people, right? So if you're just really trying to utilize my services, pick my brain, do all those things that are really time wasters, I want to X you out of my equation as quickly as possible. So remember what our goal is, is to have more meaningful conversations with people that are qualified to work with us based on what our criteria is. Why do we even need to have conversations? So really four things that you need to be doing all of the time. 
when you're talking to people in person, you're doing a social media post, you're talking to people either with your mouth or with your fingers, letting your fingers do the walking or you're doing a video or whatever, your goal is one of these four things. It's to qualify, confirm, decide, and close. You either wanna qualify people, either have them self-qualify themselves based on what you're talking about. So if you, let's say you're, you're doing a live, right? And that live is on somebody yesterday, cause I actually thought about whoever yesterday said that they wanted to focus on single parents. Um, I thought about you all day today in terms of utilizing you as an example here. If I want to work with single parents, I want to qualify people who are single parents. So when I'm talking to somebody, because my specialty is that client, right? I want to know, are you single? Are you, are you a single parent? Do you have kids, right? Um, like, are you single? Or are you doing it with, are, are you married? Are you not, right? Like, so I'm always qualifying you when I'm trying to bring you on my list, when I'm trying to engage with you, when I'm closing, I'm always trying to determine, do you meet the criteria, right? So that's the reason why conversations are so important is one is because you wanna make sure that the person that you're talking to is qualified based on whatever that criteria is that you've set. The second thing is, the second conversation purpose is to confirm. So someone may self-qualify. So let's say I'm the single person, I'm, I'm specializing in single parents who want to help get their children out of town, you know, their families out of town on a budget, right? Just making that up. And um, somebody says, yeah, I'm a single parent and I um, want to get, and maybe I'm, I put together a group trip that's just full of single parents, right? When I have a conversation with that person in the in live or when I'm doing something that like, a, like I'm having an event, I want to confirm that those people are who they say they are, right? Either again, through my words or through my action or my conversation with them, I want to confirm that they are actually what they say they are. If they tell me that they have a budget of X number of dollars, and I know that my average ticket price is, let's say my average ticket price is $3,500, and they tell me that they have $3,500, but then when I start to talk to them, they really don't. They're not even really ready to book, right? So I'm confirming, that's also why you need to have conversations, is to confirm whatever people are saying, that they're the right people to work with, and then also People are also sizing you up as well, right? So you want to give people the opportunity to make the decision to move with you and that they're the that you're the right person for them too. So you want to make sure that you're using those conversations to position yourself as the expert in your area of specialty. And then conversations are really to help me decide. I want to eliminate as many micro decisions as I possibly can, but I'm all here every day, all day for the big decisions, right? And I want to have conversations that are going to allow me to make those decisions quicker, faster, and better. And then I have conversations to close. I ask for money. Do you guys ask for money? If you're in profit, you need to ask for money. And you need to get comfortable for asking for money. It shouldn't be something like Natasha was saying, she doesn't know, right? If you are, if there is a bit of fear in any number that you say, people can smell that fear when they're talking to you. So closing conversations that talk about money is something that you've got to get super clear about. If you're selling higher than what you are comfortable with, then you've got to practice saying those numbers before you actually get on the phone with somebody or you do a web conference with somebody. So you need conversations and you need to be in authority of the conversations that you have. You need to take a stance of authority. Does that make sense? Hopefully. All right. So before we dive into the particulars, I do this particular set of slides, slides pretty much regularly. And if you're new to me, I'm gonna, I always set the stage in terms of understanding where your client is in relationship to you. If they're strangers to you, the kinds of conversations don't require you to have a physical, like face-to-face -face conversation with every stranger that you meet. Now, many of you may think, well, I need to meet as many people as I possibly can. I don't have the bandwidth to meet 
thousands of people in order to hit the numbers that I need to make, right? So I need to do that in a way that gives people the opportunity to have a conversation with me in their head based on the content that I've done. And that's really what stranger kind of conversation should really be about. It should allow somebody to get an introduction of you, right? With an offer that's low, no risk, exchanging of information and just get to know you type of thing. Many of you all, when you start your travel business or maybe in your, in your travel business and you're on social media, the only thing that you're doing and the only offers that you're making are hard offers that are asking for money right out the gate to strangers who don't know anything about you. It is not likely that a stranger is going to drop multiple thousands of dollars with you and they don't know you. They just, that's just not likely. Now, I'm not going to say it's not ever going to happen, but it's not likely. The volume of people that are strangers to you that don't know anything about your brand, don't know anything about your bomb.comness, don't know anything about what you do and how you do it. They see, an, they see a post about some Tahiti trip that's $7,000, $10,000. It's not likely they're going to click on it and buy right away. That is the reason why you need to have conversations with strangers that isn't evasive, like that isn't invasive rather. It isn't asking for money. It isn't asking and demanding something from them, time or money from them, and they don't even know you. So really at the stranger phase, which many of the people that you may, that you guys want to attract are strangers, you need to have something that starts the conversation that isn't invasive right? That isn't demanding, that isn't overbearing and asking for money overbearing when you meet somebody is uh, asking for money when you first meet somebody is overbearing and it's a little presumptuous on our part. So strangers shouldn't be hard sells. You shouldn't be trying to sell to strangers. You should be trying to introduce your brand, position yourself as the expert in whatever part of the travel area and person that you are so that when they think about and see you, they're like, oh my gosh, yeah, I care. I'm a single parent. What does she do special for single parents that I can't do for myself, right? That's what you really want. You want, <laughs> with strangers, you really want them to have a conversation in their head about something that you've put out there that allows them to say, I want to know more. Does that make sense? Like I just actually sort of put that together today in terms of explaining it is, is that we want conversations in the head. That is the whole reason I have a YouTube channel is because I want people to see my videos and be like, oh yeah, she's talking to me. Oh yeah, I understand. I, I get people all the time who send me text messages. It's like, yeah, I found you on YouTube and I am like binge watching yourself. And you know what's happening when they're binge watching me? right? They're having a bunch of conversations in their head about stuff that I'm talking about. I built that video. I created that video and I made it available for consumption. Acquaintances are people who are familiar with you. Maybe they've been referred to you by uh, other people that know you. Maybe they, they saw your YouTube channel. Maybe they saw you somewhere and they're okay with you. These are people to invite to events. If you're doing, let's say, a show and tell about a new destination that you're doing, these are great people to invite because they're familiar enough with you that they'll want to spend some time with you. Does that make sense? So they're willing to give a little bit more of themselves and their pocketbooks. That's very old. I don't think that, does people, do people still say pocketbooks? <laughs> Every time I say that, I think of my grandma, right? So they're willing to open up their wallets, right? More when they start to get to know you than they will when they don't know you, right? So you can start to introduce offers to them that require them to spend money put deposits down, really start thinking of themselves, utilizing your services to help plan trips, to actually book maybe a group trip that you have available. Acquaintances are warmed up to you. They know who you are. Events are good things to invite them to. Um, uh, webinars, uh, doing social proof, testimonials. This is the time to really start to start to introduce the idea that, hey, yeah, I actually have a, a offer greater than just a piece of content. Now, all of you all want BFFs. That is why I see most of your social media posts is because you're talking to your supposed BFFs who like, they love you. And they're like, yeah, she's dropping a trip to fill in the blank destination and I'm ready to buy, right? The BFFs, they love you. They love everything that you do. 
they're drinking the Kool-Aid and they get it hard sell to them. When you write social media posts that's talking about an offer, you need to be talking to the clients that already know you. Don't try and attract people on a new offer that, that don't know anything about you with a multiple thousand dollar offer and there's been no interaction with you. Does that make sense? So that's why it's so important to grow a community of people that know you, right? We start with strangers. We start to nurture those strangers into acquaintances. So when we have hard sell offers, we're dropping it to people that already know you. So if you've got situations where you've got group trips or you've got things that you're trying to sell and you're posting it on social media, nine times out of 10, it's not your ideal client, right? Maybe it's your friends and family and you guys already know how I feel about friends and family. And if you don't, I don't think friends and family are my bread and butter. They're the icing, the sprinkles to my business. They aren't my main business. I am attracting strangers consistently, nurturing them, and then creating relationships with people that ultimately will buy from me based on the relationship that they know of me. Type in the comments if you have any questions. What do we want to do? As a travel advisor, and frankly, as any business owner, your goal in life is to attract, relate, and convert. And that means you need to have conversations that are build them and automate. We'll talk a little bit about that in the in a minute, but you want to be consistently attracting your ideal client. You want to be consistently relating to them by either having content that they can consume that is important to them, not to you, but important to them. You guys, and, and I, I often use this as an example, and it's not that I don't like the social media content that they have. It's just not usually relevant to your audience branch up. So a lot of advisors will, they'll, they'll connect with branch up and they just start posting these random destinations with really no context to how that destination relates to their client and how that destination, how their client type needs to see themselves at that destination. It doesn't garner itself to engagement. It's generic and it's not it's not clickable. It's not scroll. It's not, the pictures are beautiful. Even the content that they write is beautiful, but it has no context to your person that you get out of town. People buy from people. They buy from people that they know. They buy from people that they like. They buy from people that they trust. I know you guys have heard of the no like trust factor. And if you haven't, it's really about particularly as we get more digitized in our world, People are not buying from inanimate brands. They're buying from people. So when you show up in social media, the first word of that is social. It's not just random generic content that doesn't connect. So the R is really about building relationships and creating content or opportunities that allow people to connect with you as the advisor, because you have a service that is uniquely able to help them, whoever the them is in your business, okay? C is all about the sale, right? It's all about the sale or the lead. It's about the transaction that you want to occur, right? Conversion can be a money transaction or it could be simply the conversion is I got leads, right? I, the action that I want is I want to grow my email list. I want to grow the members in my Facebook group. I want to grow my YouTube channel of subscribers who are listening to my content, right? The convert is the action that you want and you want to always be in action, always asking for the action to occur, whatever that may be in terms of whatever it is that you're doing, okay? All right, so what I wanna do now is really talk about this whole idea of consumption type of conversations versus interactive. Most of us think of conversations as like this, right? We're having a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, I mean, I'm having a one-to-many conversation with the group. That's an interactive conversation. But before you even get to that stage, you've got to get somebody's attention to even want to join an event or join a live or join a conversation with you so that you can have interaction. That's where consumptive type of conversations occur. The more consumption type of um, content and conversations that you can have, 
It'll allow you to maximize your time, attract volume of strangers so that they can be consuming on their own time, having these personal conversations based on uh, like uh, seeds that you've sown based on the content that you've created so that they can then start to take action that you want. All right, so when it comes to, remember, we've got four things that we're trying to do. We're trying to qualify people. So one of the things that we're trying to do is we're trying to qualify strangers and acquaintances and to confirm that they are the right, perfect client for us, right? We want them to self-qualify themselves by clicking on something that says, yes, I am that person. I always like the wedding because all of you guys, you know, it doesn't matter what you specialize in, doesn't matter who you work with, everybody can relate to specializing in the wedding space, right? I was talking to someone earlier, specializing in Disney, right? It's very relatable. If I want to identify and find people who are wedding, who are interested in getting married out of the country, right? I want to create some sort of consumption piece that's going to allow somebody when they click on it, be like, yeah, I want to know about that. Right. So your wedding, your way, right. This could be a guide. This could be a blog. This could be a blog. It could be a template. It could be an ebook, right? Every person that clicks on that, it's likely that they're either about to get married or they're thinking about marriage. Right. So that already automatically self qualifies them and, then they come into the web. So that is what we want to do in consumption type of conversations. Somebody looks at this, they see it, they click on it and they say, yes, I want a wedding my way. What does this have to say? They click and they're having that conversation in their head. Does that make sense? Like they're literally, they, they read it and they're assessing. So once they get this piece of content, they look at it and they're like, I either agree or disagree, right? The more you can get people shaking their head yes, or I said shaking their head yes, yes or no, right? The more likely they're going to remember you if you are polarizing, right? Just love uh, when Facebook does this for me. So hold on, let me just get this right back up. So the more that you can take a stance on a particular topic that you're talking about that gets people to say, oh yes, oh, I totally agree. Or gosh, I don't really dis like, and it's okay for people to disagree. I'm okay with people disagreeing with me, right? But I wanna be super, I want to make a stance in whatever type of consumption material that I'm creating. If it's a blog, if it's a video that I'm doing, if it's a guide or a template, I want it to be so good. People are like, yes, I want to use this or no, I don't agree with her at all. Right. Because even that negative, uh, that, that no still is going to be like, it, it, it jars them into remembering remembering you. Right. And that is what I want to be is I want to be remembered. I want to be constantly remembered. So I am constantly creating some way for people to consume my content based on the audience of people that I want to work with. Right. This may be a little bit of a harder concept for you guys. Right. Because when we think about social media content, we're like, I'm a travel advisor. I just need to be talking about trips. No, you need to be talking more about trips. You need to be talking more than trips. I'm going to give, give an example. I was just talking to uh, one of my um, uh, clients a couple of days ago when we were talking about, um, uh, you know, the wars that are going on right now. And if you are still booking travel in any part of that region, right, travel is great, but you really need to be talking about safety, right? You need to be talking about what everybody is thinking in their head about, is it really safe to travel in this part of the world right now? So whatever you, whoever you specialize in and wherever you specialize in all become sources and great content for you to create blogs, vlogs, consumable content that somebody can do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause there for a second and just see what do you guys think about that? How are you guys creating your consumption? Have you ever heard of that before? And when you think about your social media content, um, that you do, because really that's one of the biggest kind of consumption material that people create these days is social media posts. Have you really thought about it from that perspective? Give me some feedback in the comments or you can come off mute and um, let me know. Have you guys thought about the kind of content and the fact that you really want to have people have conversations in their head about? I think somebody raised their hand too. If you want to 
talk now, that's good. I recognize hand gestures. I'm, I'm doing like three or four things now. Sunday, yes. this is Lori. Lori. <clears throat> I, I, I think for me, when I'm planning a trip, I do a lot of group trips. Mm -hmm. And when I'm planning a trip, one of the, the things that I do not have on my, even on my website is information about um, the area in which we're traveling to. So one of the things that I wanted to incorporate was say, for example, I, I, I want to do a, a Bali trip as well, but because I have not done the research I don't feel like I'm I'm ready to do it in 2024. I'll probably have to push it to 2025. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. But I think what you're teaching us is when you are doing trips, whether it's group, individual, family, family union, whatever, you really have to give them the content that they need so they know that you know what you're actually speaking of. That is correct. And the good thing about our industry is our suppliers help us with that content. Right? right. And so when you think about your suppliers and you're taking all these supplier trainings, right, they also will come. Now, I'm not going to I'm, I'm going to I'm going to say this. Some of the suppliers that come and speak, they're very boring. <laughs> they're not mm -hmm. they're not very exciting. Right. So right. like I, I just really think you guys need to kind of size up some of the suppliers before you just have them come speak to your group. Um, some of them are exciting and they do have a personality. I'm not to say that everybody doesn't. But, you know, I have had some suppliers come in our group and they're not very dynamic. And so. If you are a dynamic personality, my recommendation is don't have them get the content from them, interview them, or maybe even do an interview kind of style type of thing. But that's exactly right, Lori. The point is, is that if you know that you're going to sell a destination, right, you need to you need to create the bridge between your client and the destination as to why they need to see themselves at that destination. And the content and the consumption kind of content that you can create are leading into the fact that you're gonna sell this. You know, you're gonna do it in 2025. You should start to have some series about Indonesia, mm -hmm. why why that area of the world is the great, the best place in the world to go to, right? Have some blogs, do some video right. blogs about it, right? Create a guide around it. Talk about like, you know, the things that you should wear when you're in um, that type of country, right? The types of, of, uh, of activities that are available, some off the beaten track. Like, so you literally, before you drop said promotion, there should be a whole content consumption series associated with those destinations before you even get there, right? Because all of that consumption that people are doing around that, that is starting to build yourself a list that's starting to get people interested in it. And then based on that, when you get ready to drop that trip, fit or like, again, I want you guys to think, even if you guys are focused on fit sales, it doesn't mean because you're not doing a grip trip, you can still create content around signature itineraries that you want to sell. And I recommend fit people who are specializing or doing prim primarily custom travel, that you have a set of go-to itineraries that are the basis for your marketing, right? That you're going to do a signature, let's say Dubai, Japan, whatever those destinations are. And that's what you're building content around because that helps you demonstrate your expertise around those particular areas. Okay. So do we, do we Sunday, do we actually create the blog and put it on our website or do we blog as we, as we do Facebook or social media marketing? So blogging is really a whole marketing strategy and blogging. I, like, and, and I, and I am not an expert blogger. That is not how I've built my, uh, my content, mm -hmm. but I do blog. And what I will tell you about blog is I use blogs as a way to gain attraction. Blogs are also great for organic traffic. So if you want to like be discovered uh, by your audience, by Google search. So SEO, it's a great way. Like you actually publish blogs and there's, you know, keywords mm -hmm. and there's a whole strategy around that. However, I've used blogs just as a way to communicate with my audience. Like I literally, I haven't done it in 2024 yet, but normally I just write a blog every week and I send it to my email list. 
And then I put mm, it on my okay. site and then I use it as a way to keep the conversation going. And I write about stuff that is important to my audience. Okay, thank you. And then I repurpose that blog and create social media posts and then I create videos, right? So I take that one piece of content, that one topic, that one thing, and I create multiplicity around it. That's a whole different strategy that um, I've talked about in the past, but we certainly will go into more in the future. All right. What I wanted to do is just give you an example of how one can do this. And so let me, I, I thought I had it open. So let me make sure I do. Um, hold on. I'm going to stop sharing for just a second because I, I, I changed my zoom settings where my dualness is not there. And oh, actually. While you're looking, I just wanted to make one comment about what you just said. Um, and you gave me a great idea about uh, well, safety in the world. <laughs> in the world, and because really people are thinking about that. Because I'm like talking to coworkers about it, and I'm like I'm thinking about it, and I'm like I really should. You just gave me a good idea to start talking about that kind of thing because you, they might you, not say it, but everybody's thinking. thinking it. Everybody. <laughs> so mm -hmm. as advisors, we should be talking about it. We should be talking about our opinion for it. I'm going to tell you, I felt the same way about uh, the wars that are going on that I felt like uh, when COVID happened, like travel advisors were afraid to talk about COVID. And I was like, you need to, you need to take a stance. Like you need to take a stance as an advisor what your agency is going to do and what you what you what you believe in i'm not asking you to take political stances here right but i am saying talk about the elephant in the room and if you are selling like i know people who are still selling egypt who are still selling um i, I don't know about israel but like they're still selling this part of the world and you would be remiss not to say something about it so don't hide from it talk about it write about it speak about it, have an opinion about it, whatever that may be, good or bad, but talk about it. That is something I completely and totally recommend. All right, um, am I still sharing or am I not sharing? Who knows what I'm doing? I'm trying to figure it out. You're are sharing. Are you seeing anything? You're sharing. I am, what do you see? Scylla Travel. Beautiful, that's exactly what I want you to see. All right, so Scylla Travel is one of my clients and actually it was Priscilla who was just speaking. This is a great example of a conversation consumptive type of piece. This is done via a sales page. And what she's selling here is she is selling, you sign up for her VIP list and you're going to get a, I believe you get a document, right? When you become a VIP, you get a guide. Is that what happens? I forget. Yeah, they get a guide once they sign up um, and they also they're on my list. So then I start emailing them about this and then I start doing, they get a video series that I recorded. So every, so often every day or every other day, they'll get an email with a video that I recorded talking about it. Nice. And I did not tell you that I was going to interview, but I just love the fact that you jumped in and you said, how has this worked for you in terms of interacting with your client base? It works great, except that the destination, um, when I, I I just got over excited about it and the co the cruise line was offering it at the last minute. It's just that at that time of the year, right before the holidays, it's pretty pricey. A lot of people are not, you know, they don't know much about, um, my audience doesn't know much about Portugal. So it's going to take me a while to educate them. I'm yeah. going to, but I do have a France one that I did and- they're all in. They're all in. And, and this is the great. And so I appreciate Priscilla that you, you, you shared because this is the whole purpose of this sort of consumptive type of marketing or conversation is, is she just now learned something about her audience. She know she now knows she tested a trip. She didn't maybe get the response that she wanted initially, but she now knows that she needs a longer consumption period before she starts to sell this type of trip. And this is really where I want you guys to be in this sort of testing phase around the content that you're creating. Ladies and gentlemen, your, your job 
is to position you and your business as the expert to the type of client that you want. Creating content that does that is the first way to do that via written content, showing up via video, hosting events, all of the above. The purpose is you want to stop the scroll and you want people to start to look at you as the person, that, the go-to person for fill in the blank, whoever it is that you help, whatever destination that you want to do. So I, I wanted to show you this because this is really a content piece. This is really intended to get her list, to grow her list, because as she said, she's then following up with emails, right? She then is following up with the video series, right? Again, this is all consumption type of content. She builds it once. Next time she sells Portugal, next time she does a river cruise, she could redo it again if she wants to, or she can reuse it. And there's so many reuse purposes. I really want you guys to be thinking about the investment of your time in this space, not focused on just selling a particular uh, trip for a particular dollar amount. At this stage, when it comes to strangers, it's really about making sure that they opt into your list so that they now become a part of your web. Is this, um, is this Priscilla, was that, is this a landing page? It is. That is exactly what it is. It's a landing page. I, I like it. Yep. Beautiful, Priscilla. Great job. All right, so confirmation is all about the interactive com conversations, right? You can have an interactive conversation. And so this is either, you interactive is really just about some sort of back and forth that you're doing with your client. And those kinds of conversations allow you to confirm on your side and allows your client to confirm on their side. And obviously the, the best way to have these sort of conversations is through messenger, email, meetings, or events. Once you build the process, automate it, right? That's really the, the thing that I want you to take away. And now I want to actually show you what that looks like in terms of, of some of the problems that you guys may have faced, right? When I started Facebook, you know, when I started online, Facebook, messenger what didn't even exist right so the only way that you could really have an interactive conversation with somebody was is you actually had to pick up the phone right nobody was zooming back then in 2003 six or whatever whenever i started I think it was 2006 nobody was zooming there was no there was no web i mean there was web conferencing but nobody not at the commercial level like they are post covid was zooming or doing web conferencing um and all of the all the conversations that i was having they were always fragmented. Even fast forward to 2021, um, 2020, my conversations were all over the place. I was in Messenger, I was in Facebook, I was in, you know, I was on um, email, and all the conversations were all over the place. I'm, I'm having conversations in my notebook, on the phone with people, I'm taking notes in a journal. I've got all of these co client conversations everywhere. And I'm literally having conversations with people that I don't need to be having conversations. Have you guys ever felt like that? When you start talking to somebody and you're like, I, I don't, I don't stop. Like, I don't want to talk to you anymore. Like, you're not the right person. Like, I, I didn't mean it. Right. And so sometimes when I go to networking events, I feel like that. I didn't like vet out the event. And then I'm like in an event for like three hours, like with a bunch of people that aren't my people that aren't my jam. And I just, I'm like, okay, is it time? Like, and then I'm sitting at dinner and I'm like, oh my gosh, like, is it time? Like, I don't like networking events. Like the older I get, the more I don't like them. Um, so I don't want to have conversations that are wasteful. And I don't want to have conversations. Don't get me wrong. You're going to have a bunch of conversations that don't always hit the mark. But I don't want to continue to have conversations that don't allow me to hit my goal. I'm going to give you a good example of one. Um, many of my uh, peeps, many of you travel advisors that I've talked to that do specialize in the wedding destination, one of the biggest time wasters, unfortunately, are those uh, wedding uh, wedding shows, right? Where you buy a table and you, you know, the people that sell you the table tell you you're going to have, there's going to be thousands of wedding brides that are going to be at the event. And that's, you know, you're going to be able to have access to all of that. In this day and age, don't get me wrong, I do think in-person events are really great, but unless I've got the ability to have a, a 
I'm going to create an offer and I'm going to be getting email directly from people that I meet. I'm not going to an event that I can't do that on. If the people that attend the event are um, freebie seekers, right? So I'm, I'm literally, when I go to events where I'm purchasing space at, I am really analyzing their audience and the likelihood of those audience members being mine. Unless it's special to me, it's not likely I'm going to attend an event and actually, you know, buy space to market at that event because just because there's a bunch of people that is attending doesn't mean that those people are my jam. That's no different than me just going to the mall and handing out business cards. Don't get me wrong. If you're doing that and that's working for you, that's great. But I don't have a lot of time to be standing at the mall handing out business cards, right? I want to do marketing events that are going to get me a lot of results. I want to have conversations with people who are most likely the kind of people that are going to do business with me, right? So for the single parent event, I'm going to go to single parent events, right? I would buy space at a single parent event, right? Maybe a conference for single parents. I would do that every day, all day if I was specializing in single parents, right? So it's super important that the, the conversations that you want to place yourself in, that you avoid these problems and that you're really getting to where I'm about to show you now, which let's see having connected conversations what that looks like. Let's address bullet number one. So I'm going to stop sharing just a second, just so I can get this uh, straight for you guys. I have it open is how many of you guys are using Messenger, Instagram? How many of you guys are using all of those platforms to talk to people? Yes, no, nobody's using any of those platforms. How many of you guys are using email to talk to people? How many of you guys are using your CRM to talk to people and you're talking to people in email and you're having phone conversations and maybe you're texting people on your phone? How many of you guys are doing that? You're doing I all want those to things. Email. I haven't started yet. Say again. I want to use email. I haven't started yet. Um, but you are sending an email out to your clients to let them know about their trips, right? Yes. So you are already using emails. So you are, I don't know if you're doing that through an email provider or if you're doing that just in your mailbox and you're sending out um, information. If you guys are booking trips, you're using email to send and get community information from your clients, right? There's all this information that as advisors, we have to send and get from clients. And most of us are doing that via email. From a marketing perspective, before someone becomes a client, I'm getting information. I'm trying to qualify people. And usually, you know, I'm doing that before I even get their email address, right? I build relationships via Facebook groups. That's been my historic method, my, my historic uh, mode of operandus, right? So I'm having a lot of conversations in Facebook um, up until recently, because I've sort of X that because it really has consumed a lot of time, but lots of messenger conversations. Some of you guys are using Instagram, right? And maybe you're having Instagram conversations with people in Instagram. Maybe you're using LinkedIn, whatever that is, you've got all these different platforms and all of those. And maybe you're using the phone. Maybe people are sending you personal texts and it's all in your phone. The text messages that people are sending you, I want to go out of town and it's in your text message. Those are all fragmented conversations that you're having. And to like, have you ever been in a situation where you're like, I know somebody sent me somewhere. Where is it? Is it in my, is it my text? Is it in my email? Is it, where is all of that information that I need to gather? Those conversations, we want to try and get them all in one place. So let me show you it, exactly how we can do that in the system for you. So let me share my screen. The most important conversations that you guys have is post sale, but the most important conversations that you need to have to get to a sale is pre-sales. And that is going to be either through email or messenger or SMS. And many of you guys are doing it manually. So what I wanted to do is just show you, there's really several types, right? You can have a conversation via a sales page, like I showed you Priscilla's page, right? She's, she's garnering an internal conversation 
but then she follows it up with an email, right? She's following it up with video content. Maybe she's on her YouTube channel and she's inviting people to join her YouTube uh, live that she's doing or watch a video that she's recorded, right? All of that is internal conversations, but when it's time to have a external and I want to have an event, I want to actually have somebody participate, I'm going to send them an invitation. Maybe I want them to book on my calendar. Maybe I want to send them a message. Maybe I want them to reply in my business message. These are all channels of communication. And I want all of those channels in one place. And we can do that inside of our system. So the first thing is, I'm just going to show you the contact record. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. yes. Okay, perfect. All right. So I've got, I was, I was playing with Jane Doe the other day and um, I was using her to do some proposal testing. And so our contact record really centralizes the conversation, no matter what kind of conversation that you may have had with your client. And let me tell you the kinds of conversations that we can have inside of our system. We can have a phone conversation and we can record and keep the uh, phone conversation recording associated with the client's record. We can have an SMS conversation with the client so we can send them text messages to their phone and record that and keep that in here. If they're on Facebook and they send me a text on my Facebook business page, my Instagram page, my LinkedIn page, I can keep all of those conversations associated with the record. If I have an appointment with somebody, I can keep all of those conversations associated with the record. That type of centralization of the conversation and the history is so important for us because I may have said something and I'm like, where is it? Well, it's right here. Right. As long as I'm utilizing the system to manage and facilitate that conversation, I'm no longer having a disconnected flow on what I said to the client. I'm even talking about from the time, using Priscilla's example, from the time that that person clicked on a site of mine and they opted in. So, you know, in that page that I showed you that Priscilla has, she has a form, the person fills out a form, they get on her list, she sends an email. All of that history is going to be here. I'm going to know where that client came from. I'm going to know all about them. And it's all going to be here in the contact record. When I think about the power of that information, I can I can look here. I mean, the, I don't have any history for Jane Doe because Jane Doe have, and I haven't really been talking, right? But the idea is, is all this history is going to be here. I'm going to see if I've got another record. I think I maybe have had some personal conversations with myself. So here, here's a good example. So on here, this lets you know, this is the first time this interaction has occurred with this client. This, they filled out a form, they visited these pages, they booked an appointment, right? Having all of that in one place is important from a conversation perspective, because now I know that they're a stranger and now I know that they're warming up, right? When they book an appointment, I can go and look at what they filled out. If they filled out a form of mine, I can go and have all of that information ready here. Another way that we help you have conversations is we actually have a conversation tab that's right here. So as conversations are coming in to you, you can see that real time. You can see that it's either an email, it's coming in from Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, it's coming in from all of these different, even, even from your Google business page. If somebody finds you on your Google business page and makes a comment on your Google business page, that will show up here. There's even the ability now on Google to actually book appointments from your Google business page if that's what you decide to do. I, for our industry, I don't really recommend that, but whatever interaction that your client has had, you've got that all centralized in the conversations tab of, of the system right here. So again, the kinds of conversations that are interactive, you can invite people through a sales page. You can have an SMS, email, phone, messenger, social media conversation with any of your clients all through the system. I'm going to pause, see if there's any questions. You can post them in the chat. We are just a little bit behind, so I'm going to um, go ahead here. 
so these are all the different types of conversations that you can have from an interactive perspective. If let's say you're hosting a live, I am a big live person. I like to do events. I like to have sort of one-on-one, -on -one, you know, one-to-many conversations. So I can sort of kill multiple birds with one stone, meet with multiple people, right? Demonstrating your expertise in that way as travel advisors is really a great thing. So if you host an event where you're, let's say you're doing Bali, like uh, Lori was mentioning, and you're getting ready to, she knows in 2025, she's going to do a Bali trip, right? So all this year, she should probably be priming people up for Bali and the fact that that's coming up. So hosting a a information session about that part of the world and why it's an amazing place for relaxation, wellness, whatever uh, you want to highlight or all of the above having an event and getting people to join that event is another way to have an interactive conversation. What I really want you to take away from here is that we just don't want to have conversations without actions. I don't want somebody just to have a conversation in their head and not take action. So when they consume a piece of content of mine, I want them to, to have already taken the action by giving me the email and then delivering the content, or I'm asking for an action to occur. I'm always asking for some sort of action, even, even if it's soft, like, right. I'm asking you to, excuse me. I'm asking you to respond to email. I'm asking you to respond to my post, right? I'm asking you to let me know that you're here. Nothing feels worse than not interacting. We are humans. <laughs> like it doesn't matter what level you are. We are built for interaction. So your content and the things that you do, the conversations should be asking for some action, particularly if you're for profit, right? Every conversation that you have, there should be some action that you are doing, either yourself or asking your client to do. And if you are doing both of those things, you're going to start to see results, okay? Um, I'm just looking at comments and Texas for Danielle, you said Texas for clients. I use every other method to communicate. Yeah, I use, I use texting for confirmation of, of actions that people have taken. So particularly when it comes to events. So if somebody is registered for an event, I'll use SMS as a way to get them to attend the event. So let's say somebody, like you said, somebody books a discovery call, you may want to use SMS to help them book that. Let's say, I know that you're doing an Africa trip. And if you do uh, like an actual event to invite people to learn more about it, I would use SMS for that. So I do like SMS for um, confirmation of hard actions that people have taken in the business. I like SMS for financial transactions, right? To deliver content to somebody. So if I'm delivering a guide, I may, because most people are on their devices. Most people still are using um, email, but most people are on their device. So if somebody opted into something, I may deliver that, that, that piece of content via a SMS um, a, a, as a way to just get that content in their hands. Cause most people are just like this, right? <laughs> so that is one of the things. So conversations plus actions, you want to see more results. You want to see more bookings. You want to see more sales, make sure you're having more consumptive type of act, um, conversations. You're getting people to consume content, which is going to allow them to get to know you. And then also you're having interactive conversations to allow you to confirm and make decisions quicker and then ultimately close. So here really are your next steps, except the formula. Don't just try and do one of the formula. Many of you guys are just trying to have like social media conversations. You don't want to have like any other kind of conversation. You just want to drop trips. So that's it. And, and that may be good if you've got a market of people that are like, if you're working with just people that know you and they trust you and they're just like, yeah, whatever she's put together, I'm in there like swimwear. Like, I mean, and there are people that show up as lifestyle promoters and they're really just selling a lifestyle. So when they drop stuff, but again, that they still have consumptive content, right? It's really around the lifestyle and desire that people who want to follow them have. So when they drop a trip or they drop a whatever, people want to buy because people want to imagine themselves like the person that they're doing. Except the formula, you've got to ask for action. Your, your conversations 
need to be either asking you to take action or asking the person that you're in conversation to act, uh, take action. What I really want you to do is start to think about the fact that you need to standardize the script, standardize the conversation. Like, you know, I'm a big willy nilly person. I used to be a big willy nilly person, particularly when it came to these sales conversations, I'd be like, I'm just going to wing it. Like, I'm just going to wing it. Right. The more you can standardize the conversation. And I'm going to give you some examples of that when it comes to qualifying clients, let's say you are, you are, you're taking in an intake, you're taking in a travel request, standardize that conversation, which is what are the requirements that you want to get from your client so that you'd have to come back and ask them 50 questions about things that you should have already got to. So as many conversations that you can standardize, the better it's going to be for you in the long run to get the kinds of actions and results that you want. Standardize the decision. I was meeting with a client earlier today and the, the big aha moment that she had was, is uh, she's, uh, selling, uh, she's selling consultative services uh, on the front end. And she was like, oh, well, I need to think about what my pricing is so that when I get to the close, I already have these solutions that I can do. The decisions that you want your clients to make, if you charge a, if you charge a fee, don't decide on the fly what your fee is. Walk into that meeting, already know what your planning fee is going to be, already know what your fees are going to be. Make the criteria for you making a decision to move forward with your client standard. What are the big yeses that you're looking for your client to exhibit, right? What are the big no's, like the, the absolute, I don't want to work with you if they do X, Y, Z. What is that criteria? If you can standardize your decision-making process, it'll allow you to make those decisions quicker when you're in conversations with people. Like I know, like I have hard and fast rules, right? Like I know what my budget, I know what my average ticket is. I don't want to book travel that's less than the average ticket. I don't want to work with people that are rude. So if you're rude to me in the sign up, if you're rude to me at all, it's not likely I'm going to work with you, right? If you're rude to any of my team members, I'm not going to work with you, right? So my criteria, my hard no's are clear and my yeses are clear as well. Understand who you want to work with understand what they're struggling with. If money is a struggle and you're doing high ticket, then there's an incongruent match there. If you want to do high ticket sales and you're attracting low ticket people who are looking for budget, there's probably something wrong in your marketing that you're attracting people who are budget seekers, right? Or maybe your content isn't attracting them and it's not repelling budget seekers. So understand who you want to work with, understand the result that you want, and make sure that you come from a purpose uh, or a place of service. Yesterday, we talked a little bit about this and I just wanna reinforce this point is, we all wanna make money in our business. We all want clients that understand the value that travel advisors bring to the table. They understand that we don't have time to be wasted and need to not waste our time, right? But how well do you understand the person that you want to work with? So when you start from a position of service, right, I'm working with single parents. And again, I'm using this example because it really is something that I think is a good way for people. If I know that I want to work with this particular type of person, single parents being the example, right? I know them and I understand. And if I don't know them, that should be your aim is to understand the struggles that they have with getting themselves out of town, how you help them get out of town bigger, faster, quicker, better, right? Understand the purpose and show up that way. Create consumptive content that addresses their concerns and understands what they are. Understand why they would say no and understand why they would say yes. So what are the reasons that a person is going to tell you no and be prepared to handle those objections? For us, many of us think that money is the objection, the number one objection for your trip. And the reason why people tell you no for money, now don't get me wrong, there's some people who just really can't afford it, but really travel is a nice to have. Like it's not a, it's not a, like you got to have it like you need surgery, right? Like it's not a, it's not a necessity. So if somebody reaches out to you 
for travel and they really have the intention of moving forward, right? Money is not the reason why they're not moving forward. It's because either the experience that you've created doesn't match the number that you've made, right? And there's a disconnect. So money, 90% of the time when it comes to our trips is not the reason. Um, and if it is, that means you haven't done something well on the front end. So if you're getting a bunch of money objections, right? There's something you've got to change on the front end of your process, right? The front end conversations that you're having so that you qualify people so that when you get into a closed conversation, money is not the question. It's, it's, it's not like it's, it's, it's not the issue because you should have already had those money conversations up front. Right. And we, as humans don't like having money conversations in this business, you need to be comfortable with money conversations. You need to be so super comfortable with them that it rolls off your tongue, $500, $250. Like your fee should be the least of your worries, right? Because if you're a high ticket seller, you're about to hit them with a big ticket, a big ticket price. And it's not your planning fee that is the high ticket price. It's usually the trip. So having a money conversation around your planning fees, $500, $1,000, I don't care what it is, right? Make it make you smile plan for the objection. And I promise you, if you've done the work up front, it's not going to be over money, right? Close on purpose. Don't accidentally close. <laughs> Don't be like, oh, well, I think I'm going to work with this person just because they asked me. Like make a decision to work with every person that you are actually making a decision to move. So make sure you have a close already. Like this is how you transition from, thank you from the requirements. Here is what I offer for your services into this is, this is how much it's going to charge. Are you ready to move forward? Period. Like, right. Like close on purpose, have a strategy on how you're going to close for that discovery call and even your follow-up call and, and listen, measure and adjust. Like if you're not measuring how many phone calls you're having or how many messages you're having, how many discovery calls you're having, how many requests you're having, how many, how are you ever going to influence that? If my goal is to have more meaningful conversations, I need to know, I need to know how many calls I need to be having every week or every month. If I, cause I know, cause again, these are things that I can control. I can control how, how much content I'm putting out there. That's asking for people to, to uh, do requests. I can control how many, like a process that gets people from request to discovery call. And I can measure that. So I want you guys to really be stewards of if you do a thing, promote the thing. And if you promote the thing, measure the thing, whatever that is. If you are doing discovery calls, how are you promoting it? How are you talking about it? And how are you measuring? If you're doing social media uh, posts, how are you promoting it? How are you measuring the, 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 the validity or the success of a post or not? If you do a thing, promote that thing and measure the thing. That would be my number one takeaway for you guys today. All right, so sneak peek at what tomorrow looks like. We are going to be doing the KISS roadmap. And so KISS stands for keep it simple and strategic and the roadmap to make it happen. From a conversation perspective, what are some of the key items that you guys are feeling about the conversations that you need to be having going forward after today's uh, workshop? You can let me know in comments or you can come off mute because this is the perfect time to do that. I think it, I need to be talking more about the discovery call. Yep. And the process associated with, because, you know, what I know about you, Priscilla, is that your discovery calls, you want for your group trips, you want people to meet with you so that you can tell them more about the trip and why, why that is. So definitely having more conversations up front about your process and why that process is good for them to help them get to a decision quicker. Love it. Love it. All right. So remembering that we do have a system that helps you get all this together. So you've got a 30, th I'm, I'm going to extend out my offer again, 30 day free trial. We'll give you free account setup. I met with some great people today. Uh, I, I We are actually setting up your account so you don't have to do all that technical setup. There's just a few things that we have to do in person. We're going to have a free 
fast action call, um, your done for you travel request setup. So making sure your calendars are there, the emails that need to go out, making sure the emails go out when they need to go out, uh, the reminders, all of that is done for you. All you have to do is personalize that. And in this masterclass, I teach you how to do that. All you have to do is go to onlinetravelboss.com forward slash sweet success trial and follow the steps there. And the number one step that you want to do after you sign up is actually do that onboarding uh, form, that survey, because that is actually how we get your account set up. I also am including a bonus that's a part of your master class. If you are struggling with discovery calls, I do have a master call, a, a master call, a master class called Discovery Calls That Rock. And inside of our um, travel request process, I include that training, which really has a discovery call script. It also teaches you how to break down that discovery call and how to conduct that call so that you can have better close rates. And if that close is to paying a design fee, how do you position your design fee on that call, close it, and again, before you start doing any design work, actually collect your funds and then actually execute. So that bonus is included when you sign up for your trial to help you close more of your discovery calls and get paid upfront for your planning services. All right, we are gonna, I'm gonna um, open it up for some Q and A, see if there's any questions. Um, and then we're gonna take it to the VIP room. So anyone who has already signed up for Travel Pro Suite, we're gonna actually stop this um, in a couple of minutes and Opus members, you can join me inside of the room. Any questions or uh, items that you guys wanna ask while I'm on here before we go and I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, I have a question. Oh, I'm sorry. No, go to. It's okay. Go ahead. <laughs> good, good evening. Um, I signed up for the travel um, 30 day trial today. I don't know if all the information was um, accepted and created and so forth. So I didn't know if I should stay on um, for the after session or not. You should absolutely stay on, Tiffany. I did get your request. And so I got it later in the day. So we have it. Right. Created yet so we will have that account either tonight tomorrow uh created for you so absolutely you're welcome to stay okay thank you so very much welcome my question sunday is um for the i guess it's a crm system mm -hmm. if, if that's if that's correct um do you have where you can send a group text i know you said something about um texting but yep. can you do it via your group? Yes. So okay. um, you would do that via an automation. And so you would uh, create an automation and um, you can send it out to mass number of people in your list. And that's, you can do that via the computer or your cell phone? Um, you can do, you can send an individual text via your cell, uh, via your phone. Um, but you know what? I don't, I don't know that I've tried to do a group text through the, the app. Um, that's a good question. You can send, you know, cause group, te group text is going to be done via an automation. So you'll set up an okay. automation. So let's say you've got a, a group, let's say it's going to Africa and you want to send a group text out to them. Now we have WhatsApp app, um, integration. I've not released that to the, the, to everybody yet, um, but that is also a way that you could do. You could create a group in WhatsApp and send it out that way, but right now it's gonna be through an automation. Okay, thanks. Yep. Um, and on your on the mobile app, it's gonna be individually. So you can find your contact and you can send a text to them, to your contact through your phone, through the system, not through like your actual phone, you know. SMS. Okay, wonderful. Now, this is for anybody who may not know, um, the government, we'll just call them the government, um, is requiring that you actually fill out if you're doing, if you're a business sending out SMS, there is an application that you have to fill out. That's not a Sunday thing. And that's not my thing. That's a government thing. So I will be walking through all of uh, all of our you know, users on how to submit that application um, so that you can get approved to send out text. All right, any other questions? No, going once, going twice. 
All right. So thank you for joining. I will see you tomorrow. We'll be keeping it simple, strategic tomorrow. So if you'd like to stay on for the VIP session um, and you are a part of our uh, tutelage, please uh, stay on and we'll, talk, we'll be talking some shop. I'm going to stop that live stream. Thanks, everybody.